So in this demonstration, we're going to talk about flexible subassemblies. So consider the assembly that I've got on screen here. Uh, we've got a, a assembly that we've mated such that we can visualize the motion of the conveyor as it pivots up and down, which is just great as long as we're in this subassembly. But what happens when we drop that into a larger assembly? So we can see we've got our tilt frame subassembly here in the context of the larger assembly by default SolidWorks treats any subassembly as a rigid component that is uh, it's uh, the internal motion of that subassembly can't be visualized now that's generally a good thing because that saves SolidWorks from having to calculate all the mates of the internal subassembly but what do we do when we have situations where we want to visualize the motion of that subassembly well very simply we use what's called flexible subassemblies the trick is just to go over to the feature manager identify the correct subassembly right click and choose properties component properties in the component properties dialog in the lower right corner choose the solve as flexible radio button now just that subassembly will be solved as flexible and you can tell in the feature manager the icon for that subassembly changes to a little bit different display but now the internal mates for that subassembly are now being solved just as if this uh, subassembly were put together entirely at the top level so we get the benefit of visualizing the motion the downside is there's a little bit more computation that takes place as a result so be careful using flexible subassemblies you don't want to set everything to flexible just those subassemblies that you do need to visualize motion for when they're placed in a higher level assembly so that's all about about flexible subassemblies.